जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरा वन चारी यमुना तीरा वन चारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय राधा माधव कुंज बिहारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी जय गोपी जना वल्लभा गिरिवर धारी यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यशोदानंदन ब्रज जन रंजना यमुना तीरा वन चारी यमुना तीरा वन चारी हरे कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे 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 रामा हरे रामा राम रामा हरे हरे
ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪದ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಜಯ ಜಯ ಪ್ರಭು ಪಾತ್ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಗ್ರಂಥ ರಾಜ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಸಮವೇತ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಜಾಯ್ ಪ್ಲೀಸ್ ರಿಪೀಟ್ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ಓಂ ನಮೋ ಭಗವತೆ ವಾಸುದೇವಾಯ ನಾರಾಯಣ ನಮಸ್ಕೃತ ನರ ನರೋತ್ತಮ ದೇವಿ ಸರಸ್ವತಿ ವ್ಯಾಸ ತಯ ಮುದೀರೇತ್ ಬಿಫೋರ್ ರಿಸೈಟಿಂಗ್ ದಿ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತ which is the very means of conquest one should offer respectful obeisances unto the personality of godhead narayana and to nara narayana rishi the supermost human being and to mother saraswati the goddess of learning and unto shila vyasa dev the author nashta prayeshu abhadreshu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama shloke bhaktir bhavati naishtiki by regular attendance in classes on the bhagavatam and by rendering of service to the pure devotee all that is troublesome to the heart is almost completely destroyed and loving service unto the personality of godhead whose praise with transcendental songs is established as an irrevocable fact om agyanati mirandasya gyananjana shalakaya chakshuron militam yena tasmay shri gurave namaha shri chaitanya manobishtam stapitam yena bhutale swayam rupa kada mahyam dadati svapadantikam vandeham shri guru shri uta padakamalam shri gurun vaishnavamsha shri rupam sahrajatam sahagana ragunatan vitam tam sajivam sadvaitam savadutam parijana sahitam krishna chaitanya devam shri radha krishna padan sahagana lalita shri vishakan vitamsha हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगत्पते गोपेश गोपिका कांत राधा कांत नमोस्तुते तप्त कांचन गौरांगी राधे वृंदावनेश्वरी वृषभानुसुते देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय ವಾಂಚಾಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಕೃಪಾ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿ ಪಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಜಯ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭೂ ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀ ಅದ್ವೈತ ಗದಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೇ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರೇ ನಮ ಓಂ ವಿಷ್ಣುಪಾದ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಪ್ರೇಷ್ಠಾಯ ಭೂತಲೆ ಶ್ರೀಮತೆ ಭಕ್ತಿ ವೇದಾಂತ ಸ್ವಾಮಿನಿ ನಾಮಿನೆ ನಮಸ್ತೆ ಸಾರಸ್ವತೆ ದೇವೆ ಗೌರವಾಣಿ ಪ್ರಚಾರಿಣೆ ನಿರ್ವಿಶೇಷ ಶೂನ್ಯವಾದಿ ಪಾಶ್ಚಾತ್ಯ ದೇಶ ತಾರಿಣೆ ಕಂಟಿನ್ಯೂಯಿಂಗ್ ವಿತ್ ಅರ್ ರೀಡಿಂಗ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಟೋ ಫೋರ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಫೈವ್ ಟುಡೆ ಬೇಸಿಕ್ಲಿ ಕಂಪ್ಲೀಟ್ ದಿ ಎಂಟೈರ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ So this is chapter 5 titled Frustration of the Sacrifice of Daksha basically 1 through 26 and the focus verse is 26 uh, sorry text 1 today so we'll just do text 1 and you can read uh, what's going to happen in the entire chapter basically 
it's as the title says it's not just frustration daksha dies <laughs> that's basically what happens in this chapter uh, in the in the in the end huh seriously frustrating <laughs> you could say that if you have consciousness you might be frustrated but you're dead <laughs> so this is um, text 1 let me pull up the sanskrit मैत्रे उवाच भवो भवान्या निधनम् प्रजापतेर असत कृताय अवगम्य नारधात स्वपार्षद शैन्यम् चतत चतत अद्वर रर भुभेर ओके आई आई मेस्ट इट अप आई डोंट इवन नो हाउ यू रिपीट इट स्वप्र स्वपार्षद शैन्यम चतद अद्वर रुरुभेर सॉरी आई जस्ट इफ समबडी वांट्स इट दे कैन डू इट या इट्स बेसिकली द रुबु डी में रुबु हु वाज या विद्धा विद्धा वितम क्रोधम अपारमादधे ओके यू कैन रिपीट क्लियरली आई एम नॉट इन अ पोजीशन हाउ टू रिपीट मैत्रे वाचा भवो भवान्या निदनम् प्रजापते Asat Kritaya Avagam Yanaradat Swaparshada Shainyam Chatat Advarar Bubir Vidhavitam Krodam Aparam Adhadhe Maitre Vacha Bhavo Bhavanya Nidhanam Prajhapater Asat Kritaya Vagamya Naradhar Swaparshada Shainyam Chatat Advararar Rukhi Swapasya dashainyam chatat advara rubhir Vidra vitam krodam aparam adate Maitre vacha Bhavo bhavanya nidhanam prajapater Asat Kritaya Avagham Naradhat Swaparshada Sainyam Chatat Advara Rarbhir Vidravitam Krodam Aparamatate Translation and purport by His Divine Grace Yesi Bhaktivedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Shri Prabhupada Ki Jai This is the word for word translation Maitreya Vacha Maitreya said Bhava Lord Shiva Bhavanya of Sati Nidhanam the death Prajapate because of Prajapati Daksha Asat Kritaya having been insulted Avaghamya, hearing about Naradat, from Narada Swaparshada Shainyam, the soldiers of his own associates Cha, and Tad Advara, produced from his Daksha sacrifice Rubhubhi by the rubus, vidravitam, were driven away, krodham, 
एंगर अपारम अनबाउंडेड आधे शोड ट्रांसलेशन माइथ्रेया सेड वेन लॉर्ड शिवा हर्ड फ्रॉम नारदा दैट सती हिज वाइफ वॉज नाउ डेड बिकॉज ऑफ प्रजापति दक्षास इंसल्ट टू हर and that his soldiers had been driven away by the rubu demigods he became greatly angry somebody read the purport uh, just wait for the microphone lord shiva understood that sati being the youngest daughter of daksha could present the case of lord shiva's purity of purpose and would thus be able to mitigate the misunderstanding <coughs> between daksha and himself but such a compromise was not attained and sati was deliberately insulted by her father by not being received properly when she visited his house without being invited sati herself could have killed her father daksha because she is the personified material energy and has immense power to kill and create within this material universe in the brahma samhita her strength is described she is capable of creating and dissolving many universes but although she is so powerful she acts under the direction of the supreme personality of godhead krishna as his shadow it would not have been difficult for sati to punish her father but she thought that since she was his daughter it was not proper for her to kill him thus she decided to give up her own body which she had obtained from his and daksha did not even check her when sati passed away giving up her body the news was conveyed by narad to lord shiva Nard always carries the news of such events because he knows their import. When Lord Shiva heard that his chaste wife Sati was dead, he naturally became exceedingly angry. He also understood that Bhrugu Muni had created the Ribhu Deva demigods by uttering the mantras of the Yajur Veda, and that these demigods had driven away all of his soldiers who were present in the arena of sacrifice. therefore he wanted to reply to his insult and thus he decided to kill daksha because he was the cause of the death of sati yeah <laughs> what happens next is in his great anger uh, lord shiva takes a hair out and creates a demon out of his hair and this demon is uh, really really powerful is the name of the demon you know veerabhadra yeah veerabhadra this is the name of this demon that uh, lord shiva creates and he goes to the arena and kills everybody basically and it is described in this chapter that daksha's skin was so hard that he was trying to cut the cut his head but he couldn't and you know what he used to basically behead him yeah they used this instrument in the sacrifice to sacrifice animals huh? so he found that it's it's actually it could be made into a movie you know it's like a <laughs> like the description here is incredible But anyway, Daksha dies. That's basically the <laughs> uh, end of story. But we see here that this entire pastime, uh, in a way, is creating an archetype. Bhagavatam gives us so many of these archetypes uh, of these characters throughout uh, its pages. Here, the archetype that causes all these problems is the archetype of Daksha himself. Hmm? And what is his position here, Daksha? he is the prajapati we read it in this verse also right he is considered to be the father of everybody prajapati are these progenitors from whom all the living entities are created right he was in a very exalted position he was very rich right these are archetypes very powerful very rich and he had this sense of entitlement you know i am i am this person you know like and from that perspective this entire thing ensues right it is from that perspective he thought oh this person didn't respect me and therefore i i don't like this person and i'm going to insult this person so much so that he let his own daughter die in front of him think about it how much ever cruel hearted you are right hard hearted you are they say the blood is thicker than water 
right? And when you have somebody who is born out of your own body, it's incredibly hard to see that person suffer, how much ever hard-hearted you are. And it is said that Sati was uninvited, right? Actually, in the, <clears throat> in the Vedic times, you, had a, you have a word for this, for somebody who comes un uninvited. Do you know what this word is? It's hmm? Atiti, Atiti, that's what it's called. Titi means time. Atiti means one who has, whom you have not given time. They just present themselves, right? This is Atiti. And for an Atiti, in the Vedic times, how is the Atiti seen? Yeah, Atiti is seen as Deva himself, the God himself. This is called Atiti Devo Bhava, right? This is how even uninvited persons are looked upon, right? That was the culture. Especially during the times that Daksha was there, he very well knew this. And who was coming un uninvited? His own daughter. He, she really didn't need any invitation to come, right? Because this was her home. This is where she grew up. This is her own father. And she came thinking precisely this. Oh, this is my, my home. I'm going there, you know. And Lord Shiva tried to tell her, you don't go there. You're not invited there. This is not going to end well. But then she just was thinking. At least this is what Prabhupada says in this purport that in Shiva, although he told her, don't go there, at least he was thinking, okay, she might be able to resolve this. You know? Daksha might hear what Sati has to say, at least. Because Sati was very, very special to Daksha. You know, before, when she was growing up, she was the youngest daughter. Usually the youngest children are the, uh, given so much love. You know, they're like the center of the household. And Sati grew up this way, and Daksha really loved her. And just because of this one person that he didn't like. And he was not a bad person. This was Lord Shiva <laughs> that we are talking about. This was not some horrible personality that this doctor, uh, his daughter went and got married to. This was Lord Shiva himself. And because of his anger, this is what anger can do. It is all consuming. And we, we saw this before. Krishna says in the Gita, there are three gates to hell. You know, three gates to hell. What are the three gates to hell? Lust, anger, and greed. These are cascading effects, actually. Um, and anger, you see, you see what, ha what can happen in anger. And this, this was to the extreme that he uh, blasphemed Shiva. Blasphemy in itself is not proper. Right? This is the first offense to the holy name. To blaspheme a devotee who has dedicated his life to propagating the holy names of the Lord. Right? This, is, this in itself is horrible. And on top of it, she is he is blaspheming a pure devotee of the Lord. In fact, there is no difference between Lord Shiva and Krishna in one perspective. Right? The, the, they are the same personalities but transformed. The, the Brahma Samhita says this is like milk and yogurt. It's the same substance, but the milk transforms into yogurt. Uh, this is Shiva. When Krishna wants to, Krishna is completely untouched by his material energy. He says, Bhumi rapo nalo vayu kammano buddhi revacha ahankara miti yame bhinna prakti rashtata. That he says, these are my separated energies. Right? It doesn't really. And Prabhupada gives this example of somebody speaking and their voice being recorded. Like we hear Prabhupada's tape. It's still Prabhupada's energy because it's his voice, but the energy uh, is separated from him in that you can do anything to the tape, nothing is going to happen to the person. Right? The person will not be affected by the tape. So this is completely, it's a separated energy of the Lord. But when Krishna wants to directly deal with the material world, when he wants to come in touch, he takes this position of Lord Shiva. Because that's why Lord Shiva is not part of the Jiva Tattva. Nobody can become Shiva. We can become other positions in this material world. We can become Ganesh Ji or we can become, I don't know, Brahma or uh, all these personalities because they are part of the Jiva Tattva. But Lord Shiva is not part of the Jiva Tattva. None of us can become Shiva, him, uh, Shiva himself. Right? This was that personality uh, to whom um, Daksha had created an offense. And this, this is like, there is no way this was going to end well. And this is what happened. But unfortunately, uh, you can see, Prabhupada is saying, Sati was not an ordinary woman. Right? Who was Sati? The, how is Prabhupada describing Sati? Yeah, this is the material energy of Krishna. 
and yeah this is the personification of the material energy of krishna and he is co- quoting this famous verse from the brahma samhita right he is saying sati can create maintain and destroy this is her potency shrishti sthiti pralaya sadhana shakti reka shrishti means creation sthiti means maintenance pralaya means destruction uh, this is uh, sati this is her energy i mean if she wanted daksha was nobody in front of her you know this is krishna's energy and she could do practically anything with daksha and yet she was thinking okay still this is my father okay I, this could be such a horrible person he's blaspheme my husband not sh- she was not looking at it from the perspective of a husband it was not a very material thing oh this she he insulted my husband and he didn't invite my husband therefore i'm going to be angry at him no 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 she was looking at it from the perspective that lord shiva was a maha bhagavata a pure devotee of the lord therefore this was not proper for daksha to insult shiva she was looking at it from that perspective and she could have killed daksha um, herself the same way uh, mother sita could have done anything with ravana <laughs> right she could have done anything with ravana but here in this instance uh, sati was thinking this is still my father i should not uh, kill my father therefore i am going to destroy something that was born out of him which was my body right i don't need this body that was born out of uh, this personality who is blaspheming a vaishnava in such horrible ways so therefore she took away her body and we see shiva's reaction lord shiva's reaction when he was insulted in the arena what was lord shiva's reaction did he get angry no he was very very patient in fact he didn't say a word he was just sad that this was happening for the others actually the way people were behaving they were sad his daksha was cursing him and he was calm he didn't mind that and then Nandishwara comes in they counter curse and then another counter curse and he was like very upset and just walked away and this is the reaction of a devotee when somebody is doing something to us our reaction is this this is what actually uh, chaitanya mahaprabhu expects of us this is the verse that krishna das kaviraj goswami says that we should tie around our necks in chaitanya charitamrita you know what this verse is yeah ತ್ರಿನಾದಿ ಸುನೀಚೇನ ತರೋರಿ ಸಹಿಷ್ಣುನ ಅಮಾನಿನ ಮಾನದೇನ ಕೀರ್ತನೀಯ ಸದಾ ಹರಿ ಆಕ್ಚುಲಿ ಹಿ ಸೇಸ್ ವಿ ಶುಡ್ ಗಿವ್ ಆಲ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ಸ್ ಟು ಅದರ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ನನ್ ಇನ್ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಇಸ್ ದ ಮೋಸ್ಟ್ ಡಿಫಿಕಲ್ಟ್ ಥಿಂಗ್ ರೈಟ್ ವೆನ್ ವಿ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸಂಬಡಿ ವಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ದೆಮ್ ಟು ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಅಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಬಟ್ ಮಹಾಪ್ರಭು ಇಸ್ ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಸೋ ಸೋ ಮಚ್ ಫರ್ದರ್ ಇನ್ ಸೇಯಿಂಗ್ ಡಸನ್ ಮ್ಯಾಟರ್ ಇಫ್ ಪೀಪಲ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ನಾಟ್ ಯು ಗಿವ್ ದಮ್ ಆಲ್ ರೆಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟ್ ಸೊ ಲಾಟ್ ಶಿವ ವಾಸ್ ನಾಟ್ ರಿಲಿ ಎಕ್ಸ್ಪೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಎನಿಥಿಂಗ್ ಯು ನೋ for him for himself but we see his reaction the exact opposite here he was so furious and angry why was he so furious and angry this time yeah because it wasn't him he was not angry because it was his wife he was angry because a devotee was being insulted this was sati we have read about her purity and chastity she was no ordinary personality and she was being insulted and it was not proper for daksha to do it and he was the reason for her to even die think about it this is such an extreme case that you let the devotee die in front of you so this is the reason why lord shiva was angry hmm? not for himself so this is how devotees react not for themselves for themselves they are very very tolerant they can take any insults that they want they can be very patient with anything that's thrown at them at least that's that's what's expected but <clears throat> they cannot see another devotee being insulted at that time they definitely step in and react we see that in the most munificent incarnation right we see that lord shiva is rudra himself he is the personification of anger right when lord brahma gets angry at the kumaras in the second canto we've read that's when lord shiva is born isn't it he, uh, brahma is trying to create bodies this is his uh, duty and his four sons kumara said no 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 we don't want to get married and create we just going to stay five year olds and we going to be brahmacharis <laughs> not really helping lord brahma you know so then lord brahma gets angry at, at his uh, sons for not uh, really uh, following his instructions and from his anger uh, lord shiva comes right yes 
yeah from his forehead yeah from his forehead he comes i forget that detail so uh, this is personification of anger right uh, okay you can expect this of lord shiva okay he has this quality he could get really angry but you see we see namo mahavadanyaya right this is mahaprabhu he is the most munificent of all incarnations and yet there was one instance where he was very angry very very angry remember what instance mahaprabhu became very angry yeah he was okay he was tolerating and tolerating and tolerating and when they basically physically assaulted nityananda prabhu that was it that was the limit of his tolerance and he called his chakra <laughs> you know he was ready to break out of his character <laughs> so to speak and kill jagai and madai yeah, you, you see and you see again what the reaction of nityananda prabhu was he didn't say oh this person hit me okay go on take his head <laughs> nityananda prabhu's reaction to this was oh mahaprabhu this is not what you have come here for it's fine if they if they actually uh, assault me but please give them your mercy this is the ideal you know it's it's remarkable how uh, this is why mahaprabhu came you know the entire chaitanya charitamrita is basically shrimad bhagavatam in action right it lives the pages of shrimad bhagavatam on how uh, we have to be as devotees so anyway we are out of time so those are some of the thoughts and narad muni comes to say as usual uh, this message yes mother kunti thank you was it that the moment that lord nityananda became the spiritual master that was recognized as the spiritual master of shri chaitanya mahaprabhu no i don't understand what yeah, was it the it's time in the, when nityananda prabhu chaitanya charitamrita that yeah. at that moment when lord nityananda was instructing mahaprabhu hmm this is not your this is not for this yuga or this age right yeah. now yeah if you kill them you've got to kill everybody yeah so <laughs> so he he said this is not this is you're the mercy incarnation and i think that is when lord chaitanya hmm. actually acknowledged and understood oh. that lord nityananda this is eternal spiritual master. Mm. They're 30 years apart. Yeah, yeah. That's another thing I found out. Yeah. And so not only is his big brother, he's a big brother. Yeah. And <laughs> and but he's the guru yes. of Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Yeah. Yeah, I didn't know that. Thank you for sharing. Like very nice class Prabhu. That with especially with the little time that you had, you you uh were expert in that. Um my question is is I, in Jagai Jagai Mandai we understand that they are put into this situation to you know be demons and stuff and we mm. hear the story and then we hear like Daksha we don't have his background from at least what I understand mm. and so I'm trying to understand this uh point that the whole Srimad Bhagavatam is all just the arrangement of the Lord like Daksha mm. was is meant to be a you know we shouldn't uh see him as you know a regular person in a sense hmm. he's a jiva under the influence of the material nature um and so i'm i'm kind of interested in this in the sense that like how do we relate to it <coughs> ourselves how do we re- understand this <coughs> because like i've even heard that in iskon we have iskon leela and stuff like that so do i just start saying <laughs> oh this is all i've been put here by krishna and the, you know whatever i do is okay cuz you know uh, it doesn't that doesn't really make sense you know what i mean So uh, please help me understand that like the whole entire Shri Mad Bhagavatam yeah being in the sense of it's all Krishna's arrangement and all these devotees are put in this way. Yeah actually everything is Krishna's leela <laughs> not just Shri Mad Bhagavatam every single thing that happens is Krishna's leela. You know what leela means? Fast time more than that it's play. Right? Uh, this is the aspect of God that is not stressed often in the sense that when we ask somebody in on the road can you say who god is say i'm i'm the father the god is the father he is the provider right everything is from our perspective we see that oh he is there to provide for me he is the one who has created me he is the one who is maintaining me he knows everything about me 
But apart from us, Krishna has his own likings and dislikings as a person. Therefore, everything that he does is a play, is Leela in one sense. That's the grandest of all sense. Right? Everything that's happening is Krishna's play. But that doesn't uh, make uh, what Daksha is doing right. You, this is something that we say that, oh, we, we put all responsibility on Krishna and say, oh, this is Krishna's Leela. You know, this is happening because Krishna wants this to happen. No, 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 no. He has given us this tiny amount of free will with which we can act. Right? And Daksha was using his free will here. He is a great personality, no doubt. That doesn't mean the things that he did were right. Both don't have to be mutually exclusive. Right? Daksha was a Prajapati. For somebody to be a Prajapati, you have to be very highly qualified. Not anybody can become a Prajapati. Right? In that sense, Daksha was a very exalted personality. Hmm? And all the Brahmanas and the leaders were looking up to him right, from that position. But that doesn't take, a, take, a, take away from the fact that he was influenced by, by the mode of ignorance, by the way he was acting. Right? He was still under the modes of ignorance. He was still in the material world. Everybody is here in this material world, we know, whether it's a tiny ant or Lord Brahma himself, we are here because we have this tendency to lord it over material nature. So you cannot exclude that fact. Right? We wanted to be separate from Krishna and enjoy for ourselves. So Krishna creates these positions. So go play, play in this dollhouse. So Daksha, you want to have these propensities? Okay, you take this position if you have this piety. Because he was a very pious person or else you cannot become a Prajapati. Right? But the, the point that Bhagavatam is trying to demonstrate is that you could be so pious, but the material energy of Krishna is so strong, so strong that anybody can be overcome by it unless you take the shelter of the, uh, Krishna. This is the point. That this is not just Krishna's Leela. We cannot discount everything and say, oh, everything is by the arrangement of God. But in a way, not a blade of grass moves without the, the permission of the Lord, right? In that way, everything is an arrangement of the Lord. Isn't it? But we cannot absolve our responsibility and say, oh, this is all Krishna's doing and I have no part in it. We all have our parts in it. Okay, so we can understand this that... Uh in Srimad Bhagavatam, there is examples of people under the modes of, are under the control of Mahamaya yeah. that are being, yeah. we're, we're not thinking of this as all Yoga Maya, no. basically. Okay. No. These are not things that are happening in the spiritual world. Although, the, the energies of Krishna are trying to do things to, see if Krishna wants to have a nice fight, he cannot do it in the spiritual world. He does, does some wrestling with his cowherd friends, but he wants to have a good fight. You see the pastime of Varahadev, right? There are living entities who want to fight with Krishna and Maya puts this together for Krishna. And Krishna is surprised every time what Maya can create for him. You know, it's like <laughs> these incredible demons that she starts creating. <laughs> in a way, everything f is for his play, in, in, in a way, right? But she puts the circumstances together eh, because of it's, it's our own desire also that we want to fight with Krishna. Right? That is coming from there. Nobody is forcing us to do it. <clears throat> so, so, I'm sorry. Um, kind of, I'm sorry. But I'm really interested. Uh, so, in Jedi, our, uh, okay, so Hinaranya Kashipu yeah. and uh, Hinarang Naksha, yeah. it's understood that there is this big pastime. So, is that Yoga Maya? Uh, no. No? No. Th when they come into this material world, right, they come under the shelter of Mahamaya. That's basically it. This entire world, this is the verse that Prabhupada is quoting in, in, the, in, a, in the purport from uh, the Brahma Samhita, right? This is Chayeva Yasya uh, Bhuvanani Bibritta Durga. This is, this is a shadow energy. The Durga is the shadow energy of the actual spiritual energy uh, in, the, in the spiritual world. So when we are here in this material world, we are, most people are covered by this material energy of Krishna. Very few people. Krishna says, Mahatmanas tu maam partha daivim prakriti maashrita. Anybody who has taken shelter of Krishna's internal potency, then they are under the shelter of yoga maya. But we see in the activity of Hiranyakashipu and Hiranyaksha, they are completely covered by Mahamaya. Or else there is no way that you can actually fight with Krishna. If you, if you know who Krishna is, when you are in the shelter of internal potency, how will you say things like this? 
right? The Shrimad Bhagavatam is so glorious only because it shows such personalities and their fall and how glorious they come up again. Right? That's why Srimad Bhagavatam is glorious. It's not showing all these uh, ideal utopian personalities that we can never relate to, that we can never emulate. Right? Then we can say, okay, this is all, all an exception. This is all an exception. And how can I even uh, aspire to be this? We see Dhruva Maharaj. Right? He's a pure devotee of the Lord. But was he always a pure devotee of the Lord? He was overcome by anger. If you are under the internal potency of the Lord, how can the external potency affect you? But that takes him to the shelter of the internal potency. That's the glory of Bhagavatam. Right? 35. <clears throat> Any other questions or comments? Yes, Abhay. I was actually, I remember hearing a lecture on the, this concept of free will versus mm. oh, everything is arranged by Krishna because <clears throat> sometimes when you get in your head too much, you're like, okay, well, if everything is by Krishna, then what is the point of anything? Then yeah. everything is just done by Krishna. And so he does everything for himself and whatever, like it gets complicated because we get yeah. bewildered. But uh, I remember the, the Prabhu explaining it that what Krishna has given us is he's, fa he's facilitating everything. Yeah. So he has given you your sphere of influence. It might be limited, yeah. but you have complete free will to do whatever you want yeah. in that sphere. But beyond that, Krishna is so intelligent. He knows how to utilize everybody's individual spheres yeah. to conduct things forward. Correct. So it's not that we don't have free will. Krishna is just so intelligent. He's supreme. Yeah. He understands that, okay, if he does this, then we can do this. Then we can yeah. do that. And so how he conducts these plays, like you're saying, it's all a big play, but he knows. Yeah. It's not that you don't have free will. Yeah. He just understands what you're doing Correct. and where you're coming from and where you're, what the action will lead to. And how can I use that in for, in for this drama or for this or that? Yeah. So that very, was kind of very nice. He never interferes with our free will. This is very clear in the, in the Bhagavad Gita. How does Krishna describe the Paramatma? The first word, do you know? Famous verse in the Gita. Yeah, this is Upadrishta. What is Upadrishta? Yeah, he's just overseeing everything. He's just observing everything. This is the role of the Paramatma. He doesn't come in <clears throat> and start influencing things unless we turn to him. Right? When we turn to him, then he speaks to us. If we don't turn to him, he's just Upadrishta and Anumanta. He's just allowing for us to do the things that we have to do. Right? So This is Krishna. Okay, I think, uh, stop. I think we should stop here. It's 8.40 already. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Vancha Kalpatarubhyasya, Kripa Sandubhya Eva